Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on what I believe is supposed to be a 284 locomotive from Varney. The story behind this thing is around a year ago, I was going through a train store called Larkspur Line, and they had recently acquired a whole bunch of boxes of old model railroading equipment. Anyways, they let me go through some of the boxes, and I opened this one up, and they had a whole bunch of vintage project locomotives, and most of these were in really poor condition, but amongst them all was this really unique vintage Varney engine, and the second I saw this thing, I just wanted to buy it. I just thought this was such a cool-looking locomotive. I didn't know anything about its working or non-working condition, but I just figured I'd kind of take a gamble and see what happens. I paid $50 for it, which I thought was a pretty good deal in Canadian money, especially considering it also came with this brass tender. I don't think this is is the original but uh, it should work for trying to get this thing going again anyways after i bought it brought it home and uh, tested it out it turns out this thing is in working condition to some extent when you give it power it can move a little bit but the current draw is ridiculously high and uh, i wouldn't really consider it a runner i mean i was giving it like 16 volts and it was hardly moving so uh, today what we're going to try to do is clean it all up uh, re-lubricate everything and if we're lucky we can turn this thing back into a runner because uh, judging by some of the parts this engine has seen a lot of love uh, you can see the headlight uh, is quite burnt which means that this engine was run a lot so i I think that this thing probably has some stories to tell and uh, frankly I just love to see it running around my layout so let's see if we can bring this thing back to its heyday. Anyways to get started we'll take it over to the track I'll show you all what it's currently doing hopefully it hasn't gotten any worse since the last time and then we'll uh, disassemble it and see if we can't make this thing work a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and set this locomotive up on the track. It did move a little bit last time so I do have some sense of confidence that it will do it again. But it's also been almost a year since I bought it, so it hasn't done anything in that time frame, so I'm not really sure what's up. This is obviously supposed to go to the tender. Not sure which rail it picks up power from. Absolutely nothing. Well, you know, there's power in the track. Huh, well, it seems that this thing has unfortunately gotten worse. I, I swear it did move a little bit last time, but uh, yeah, it you know, these wheels are certainly not looking great, so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't picking up power well, but for it to not pick up any power at all, it's a little unusual. It could be a problem with the brushes, or it could be something like a broken soldering connection somewhere inside here. I don't really know, but let's take it back over to the workbench and see if we can correct whatever's going on with this thing. So those were certainly not the results I wanted to see. I'm kind of amazed that just by sitting for 10 months, this thing somehow managed to get worse. But in any case, we already had to take it apart. And at least we're not dealing with, you know, a shorted out motor or something like that. It's probably just a broken soldering joint. I'm not really sure. But in any case, we have to figure out how to get this whole thing apart. Now, while I was looking at this thing earlier, I did happen to notice that it seems to be missing a screw back here. So the back of the frame is completely loose. That's not so good, but I also noticed that there is a screw under here. So hopefully if we remove that, the fact that this one's already gone will allow us to just take the whole chassis out right away and get access to that motor where we can figure out what exactly is going on with it. <laughs> that screw is mighty loose too. All right, and just like that, we are in fact inside. So far, everything looks okay. Seems to be turning pretty well, so we know it's not seized up. Let's have a look at the uh, commutator here. Hmm, <laughs> this engine definitely had a lot of use. This is certainly by no means the worst commutator I've ever seen, but uh, this engine... It's undoubtedly high mileage. I mean, whenever you see uh, the gaps on the commutator full of carbon like this, you know that this thing got some use, which is a good thing. I mean, it's what it was meant to do, right? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised this thing didn't start. I, I don't see anything wrong with this. I mean, that's maybe not the best looking wire there, so that could be the issue, but I don't know. I'm starting to think maybe the commutator was involved with that. Well, with that commutator looking a fair bit better, I think we'll reinstall the brushes and we'll try to test this thing out here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, very good. So I guess that motor just needed a little bit of a cleaning or possibly a bit of adjusting with the brushes. In any case, we got it going again. So now the goal is gonna be cleaning uh, out some certain parts of the wheels here. I'm also noticing that the motor was not installed properly. You see how it's uh, off to the right here? So we'll certainly have to adjust that. All right, very good. So now the goal is going to be just kind of lubricating everything up, getting all the metal contacts all cleaned up, and uh, hopefully we'll have a decent runner. We're also going to have to sort out the whole tender situation, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, I just want to open this up and see what's going on with the bearings and whatnot. This right here is really strange. It looks like they included some sort of a nylon screw. I've never seen that on an HO scale model before. Anyways, uh, if we open that up, well, there's certainly a little bit of grease here and there, which we could clean out, but far from the worst I've seen. We'll still go through and clean everything up, though, just to make sure that this thing has the best chance it has at running well. I'll just soak this Q-tip in a little bit of brake cleaner, and that should do a really good job at uh, cutting through all the old grime. I wouldn't recommend doing this on any plastic or painted parts, because uh, brake cleaner will just go right through it. I think for an old die-cast model like this, just as long as it doesn't get on the little plastic insulators, it should be okay. It will do a good job at breaking down old lubricants and things like that. All right, well, I think everything in here is looking pretty good. I'm just going to quickly throw a little bit of oil over here just to lubricate all the moving parts. We'll uh, seal this back up, and then we'll just work on uh, some of the other parts of the engine. Lubricate both the uh, bearings on the motor here. Uh, for the worm gear, we're going to give this thing a little bit of a uh, special treatment. We're going to put some nice Labelle 106 grease on it. That was a little bit of Labelle 107 oil, and we'll just kind of mix those together. You always want to put a thick grease uh, when you're working with metal parts like brass, because if you don't put a thick enough oil, these things will strip out. Luckily, this has a nylon gear, so it's not quite as likely, but I don't know. I find with metal parts, it's very important to put a, a thick lubricant. That should work quite well. And then we're just going to lubricate all the moving components on the outside of the locomotive. All right, now let's see if we can fix up those wheels a little bit here. Now, of course, the second we get it put back together, it doesn't want to start again. I'm starting to think that this thing is not making a proper uh, reference to ground. Because it's funny, when I hook wires directly up to the brushes, no problems. But when we try to connect something to the chassis, nothing. So that's not such a great sign. I just want to make sure that maybe points here are not all oxidized. It's probably what's going on, honestly. Yeah, I think we might have just found our main issue here. It seems like that screw might have stripped out. I wonder if it was already like that. Let's see if that fixed the ground issue. Hmm, not really. Okay, there's another problem. I see there's like a little bit of crud right there. Oh yeah, there we go. You see those sparks nice and bright? Yeah, that's more like it. So I'm really happy with that, but I'll be honest with all of you. Now that we've seen that this is bad, I think I just want to check in on the other brush and uh, let's just get rid of that piece of wire right there. I don't trust this thing, you know, I bet... It's just ready to go.
This one's not as bad, but you can see there is a little bit of a buildup. So I don't know if a little bit of moisture maybe got trapped in here at some point. It just got caught under those pieces of metal, but uh, that's a really weird problem. I've never seen that happen before on any of these locomotives. All right, well, that to me looks like a far more trustworthy connection. Not just to be sure, let's test it all out here. That right there is what I want to see. It just starts every time. So I uh, have a little more confidence in this thing that uh, it's not going to go failing on us now. So I think we can probably put the shell on for real this time and then uh, actually get to cleaning the wheels, which is really important because those are not looking so good. At least we don't have to worry about uh, all of this stuff going bad. Might be nice to try to figure out what's going on with the light because it doesn't look like that's wired in anything. I don't really know what the story is. This appears to be one of the wires. I'm probably just kind of oxidized. That wire's in iffy condition. I wonder if the light still works. Sparks. Hmm. This is interesting. I wonder why they left so much slack on the wire. I would be pretty surprised if uh, this thing still works. I mean, that light certainly does look burnt out. Well, it's a little while later. I wasn't able to find anything to replace this. This is a ridiculously small grain bulb, so I don't really know where you'd get one of those. Anyways, I found this other grain bulb, which is about double the size. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's not really going to fit in the same socket. And it looks similar, but it's uh, in reality a little bit longer. Now, I was looking at this. I don't know how the original owner actually fed those wires through a hole that size. So I think what I'm going to do is dremel that out just wide enough so we can get the base of this bulb here. And that will also kind of secure it in place. And I think that that should work pretty well. This wire right here is exposed, but that's okay because it needs to uh, connect with that anyway. So I think we'll go with that. Well, that seems pretty good. Now, why don't we get the uh, wheels all cleaned up? Everybody's always asking me what I use to clean my wheels, and uh, this is just a sliver of a track cleaner. You can buy these at most hobby stores or online. Uh, this one's by Pico. It's usually just called a, a track bright, and uh, you just shave off a little piece because, you know, trying to negotiate this around the flanges and so on is a little awkward, but you shave off a little bit like this, and you can just kind of, you know, get it in those uh, hard to reach areas. So we'll uh, get this hooked up to some power and then we'll just kind of let the wheels clean themselves. All right, well, those wheels, I'd say, are probably looking the best they have in maybe 40 years. I don't know, but uh, either way, I think these are going to work a lot better than what we had before. We'll probably get the uh, pilot on here and then we have to sort out the whole situation with the tender. But as I said, we'll cross that bridge. I'd really like to find a screw for the back here just because there should be some support and all the stresses on the front screw, which really is not ideal. So let's see what we can find here. I have this magnet, which has just picked up every screw in the box. So uh, I guess we'll just kind of look through here until we find something around the right size. Yeah, that one's definitely not going to work. Mm -hmm, we might have a fit.
Perfect. All right, well, I think at this point the locomotive is pretty much done, so I guess we'll focus in on the tender here. Now, uh, this thing actually looks to be in pretty good condition. It's missing uh, well, a couple ladders here and there, but uh, overall the wheels look pretty clean. I am going to polish them up a little bit, but first we need to figure out how we're actually going to wire this to the locomotive. It's probably this side. Nope. Okay, so uh, we need to... Basically, you have the wheels the opposite of that. Right now, they're conducting from this side. You can tell because the isolator is on this side, which means that these trucks right here need to be flipped around. You just rotate these around. Now, to get them in the right position, you have to use the uh, hole on the opposite side. just uh, connect this feed to that screw right there it's uh, again it's supposed to be for the ladders but I don't have any replacements so we're just gonna roll with that all right that seems pretty solid went ahead and uh, crafted up this little drawbar here it's nothing too pretty but I think it will work And now I'm just going to manually uh, clean up the wheels. I'm only going to clean the ones on this side, though, because uh, those are isolated, so it's not really going to make a difference performance-wise. All right, well, I've finished polishing up those wheels, and I think that they're looking pretty good. I also went ahead and threw on a good old American-made metal KD coupler, which I think just uh, brings this engine up. I, I wouldn't want to put any other kind of coupler on an engine like this. So with that, I think this thing is ready to be taken over to the track for hopefully its first test run. It's all sorted out here and then we'll uh, see what's up. Alrighty here, folks. Moment of truth. I'm feeling pretty good about this thing. You know, it did run on the bench, but uh, as we all know, just because something runs on the bench does not mean it will run on the track. Especially since uh, we were not testing this thing with the tender, which could bring its own variety of issues. But let's give it a chance here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It just takes right off. Right on. We have got a runner. It's a little bit loud, but uh, I mean, she's going. It did not even hesitate. Fantastic. Headlights shining nice and bright. Overall, it seems pretty good. Let we'll this thing do a few laps and hopefully break in. Go over here. Current draws in spec when we started, it was a little bit high, but you know what? For the amount of voltage we're giving it, that's uh, perfect. I'm thrilled. I really was not expecting it to uh, just go like that. Well, it's now around 10 minutes later, and this thing hasn't had a single problem. It's just been going around the layout like a top. I'm so happy with how this thing is running. I really was not expecting that. You know, I find with a lot of these older locomotives, it's usually uh, take it to the track, fiddle with it, take it back to the bench, bring it back to the track. But with this one, it just uh, went off to the bench, did some repairs, and uh, it's running perfectly. I think this thing really wanted to go. I'd be really curious. I, w I wish there was a way to know the history on it, but, uh, you know, it's amazing. This thing was probably uh, doing many miles back in the 50s or whenever it was created, and here it is all these years later. Still running like a tank with not a whole lot of work. I mean, it was really just a bit of cleaning and lubrication, tiny bit of rewiring. Anyways, I think we should back this thing up and actually get it hooked up to some cars, because uh, I bet this could probably pull quite a bit. It's quite a hefty engine, so... I think probably haul like 50 cars or something like that. Here's a model of a locomotive which was made before intermodal cars even existed and in the modern day. And it hauls them around. It's not even pushing it honestly. That I'd be a really good idea to hook up even more cars and see what this thing can do. It's still not even struggling.
Oh, that's not good. Well, I was not expecting that to happen. I wonder where that was connected on. So uh, this part just seems to have come loose. It was connected to this screw right here. I don't know if it was just loose or if it's stripped out, but uh, either way, we're gonna have to figure out a way to uh, get that connected back on. It's sort of unfortunate because up until then it was working perfectly, but uh, it really shows you how tough these old locomotives are. If this was a modern engine, that would have certainly bent if not destroyed the rod, but uh, the metal's so thick that uh, it wasn't enough. I mean, you heard the entire train Basically, the force of the entire train slammed against this thing, and uh, it didn't break it, which is just a testament to how tough these old uh, 50s varnies are. All right, so with a bit of fiddling, I was able to uh, get that rod back into place. It turns out the screw and the rod were not stripped out. It had just come loose, and uh, wouldn't you know it, the one on the other side is also loose. So I'm going to put a little bit of CA just to make sure that that doesn't happen again. I'm going to put it on the inside, though, because you would never want to put it here otherwise they're gonna seize up the uh, locomotive this is something that has to be done very carefully but we'll just put a bit on the back of the screw so it doesn't back out again and cause any damage to this thing all right i'm just gonna let that dry for uh, probably about a half hour and then we'll come back to it and uh, hopefully the rest of the drive is still working properly all right, with the glue all dried, I think this locomotive should be ready to go once again. So I think really the only thing left to do is run this thing around the layout with some cars and get some different rail fanning shots. So let's begin.
Well, folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I am just blown away by these results. I just can't believe how well this thing turned out. You know, I did have some sense that maybe we'd be able to get this thing running again, but I didn't think it would run all that well. And here it is, just flying around. It, it really is just such a testament to how well these things were built. I'm sure if Gordon Varney were still around today, he'd be so happy to see one of his machines some 70 to 60 years later, still going with all original parts. It's just incredible, the craftsmanship they used to put in on these things. I mean, even by modern standards, this thing is quite impressive. Like, just check out the low speed. It's uh, very good for an engine of its age. You can see that's uh, quite impressive right there. And, and even things like the efficiency of the motor, which they didn't worry about back then. Like this thing is still in spec. Like that's about as good as an Atherin blue box. So yeah, I just could not be happier. What an impressive piece of machinery. And uh, given that it's lasted as long as it has, I don't see why it can't run another 50 years and uh, go through a second heyday. Anyways, with that, I hope you all enjoyed. And with that, I'd just like to thank you all so much for watching.